So she asked me for a black and mild. So anyways, it wasn't even like maybe a minute later. I was trying to find my registration and all that stuff because the people were on the way. The, the police officer. Then another car slammed it to me. Boom. When this man slammed it to me, he like jackknifed across the highway. He had a, a light pole and his legs, you guys, were hanging out the car and stuff like that. And then uh, my four-door sedan got smushed into a two-door. Uh, windows were busted all out. My CDs were scattered all across the highway. Credit cards were scattered all across the highway. I had an eyebrow ring that popped out. Braces on my teeth popped out. You know, the guy out of the car was screaming, ah, because I thought I was dead. You know, I just thought I was dead. So I remember the fire, uh, fireman on the scene. He looked at the car and shook his head. He looked at me like, you shouldn't be alive, ma'am. How, how did you get up out of that? Because if there was anybody in my back seat, they would have been dead. So he handed, picked up this Bible that my sister gave me two weeks prior. He said, here, young lady, this belongs to you. He handed me this Bible. And that stuck with me. He said, here, young lady, this saved your life. Here, young lady. He picked this Bible up and said, here, young lady, this saved your life. And that stuck with me like 13, 14 years later. And I was like, yes, it did save my life. Then immediately, you know, uh, maybe like shortly after, I remember my sister was like, okay, now do you want to come to church with me? I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot now. You know, so she uh, met me, uh, she connected me with this lady, this elder in the church. And she invited me to her house for a Bible study. She laid hands on me. I got the Holy Spirit. It was speaking in tongues. Then I got baptized. Then I was on fire for God. I got saved 21 years old officially got saved for the Lord just living uh, you know on fire for God I was winning people over to God inviting so many people to church you know just doing Bible studies at home I was just so zealous but I was still a baby in Christ so I made it you know I made some mistakes along the way uh, I got married really fast I met uh, you know my children's father um, I didn't probably know him about that long, maybe about four or five months, and we got married. We rushed and got married. And um, he was very religious, and he kept hopping to different churches, you know. And every time I locked a church, he'd be like, nope, I don't like this church. And he kept comparing it to the church, his home church. And he didn't give the churches that I like a shot, so I just gave up, you know. Remind you, I had no foundation in God whatsoever. I was just a babe in Christ. I was only maybe saved for about six months, and then I got married to him. All right, so here I am. Just everything about me just changed. My whole demeanor changed. I went from just being so smiley, so happy all the time, to just with an attitude. My flesh started coming back. That old Kim started coming back. The Kim that was lustful and the Kim that was fast and promiscuous and that stripper side you know start coming back you know i didn't read my bible no more i didn't even know how to pray you guys i was so embarrassed you know i remember just being on the phone with my ex-in-laws and you know we we're all trying to pray together and they said kimberly it's your turn i didn't know how to pray i didn't know what to say so just going through that you know and things like that so anywho i stopped going to church you guys for a long time I went years without going to church. Here I was from 21 on fire for God to about, I didn't start going back to church faithfully. I say faithfully till I got maybe about 29. So that's like years without going to church, you know, faithfully. You know, I would go to church like mm, maybe four or five times out of the year, you know, just just doing what I wanted to do. Matter of fact, my, my school was my husband at the time, my school, you know, I was all gun ho I want to be a doctor and I was the bomb y'all you know I had straight A's I got one more class away from my master's degree but God shut that door um, you know I got credentials it's everything you know um, 15 medical schools were interested in me had medical school interviews and stuff like that and an interview with the CDC Center for Disease Control to do a internship for public health just some great things you know anyways I forgot about God in that process. I just shut God out. And I, I, and I was heading down the wrong track, heading straight to hell. You know, so what happened was, you know, there was some infidelity in my first marriage on both parties. 
you know and it was just a rocky marriage we were both trying to work work it out but it just didn't work out so anyways uh, I remember he got orders military orders to go to Colorado he said I want you to come with me we're gonna work on this marriage so what happened you know got there all loose and I remember praying you know because whenever you get a storm in your life some people think of it as a bad thing but that's God's way of trying to get your attention all right and the storm in my life taught me how to pray got me closer to God and everything like that so I remember just praying out to God and I said God should I leave you know Colorado should I go back to North Carolina and I heard the Holy Spirit he said stay right how many of you guys know that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness? I was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. But I remember before I left North Carolina, I prayed. I said, God, I just want to be close to you. That's exactly what happened. So be careful what you pray for. So here I am, um, you know, in, in Colorado going through uh, marital stress and strain, just trying to fight for the, you know, my first marriage and just going through and, you know, just trying to get my life together and just God had my total attention. All right, so I went through the humiliation, I went through the shame, I went through everything. So uh, what happened was uh, one day me and my ex got in this big fight. You know, I got arrested. I got a restraining order on me. I was on probation for two years because I had an anger issue. I was a hot mess. You know, I was heading down the wrong track. I was like diary of a mad black woman. I just was destroying property. Just, just a hot mess, you know. And this is the crazy part, you guys. See, the devil speaks to people too. Amen. And the, the devil was speaking to me. He told me exactly when my ex was going to be outside. He told me exactly when, uh, you know, uh, what he got out of my car. I just knew everything, you know. And it's crazy. So I thank God that I hear from God now and I'm hearing I'm on the right frequency. All right. So I remember just going outside when the enemy told me. Uh, when to go outside and I remember I just snapped and anyway to make a long story short I was just was sitting in a jail cell and this all this ties in of how I became a prophet all right I just was sitting in a jail cell and I had no hope to live I was suicidal because I had anxiety uh, in that dark year when I, when I stopped going to church I, I got anxiety so I had anxiety for like five years it was debilitating I couldn't go out to eat anymore. I couldn't just be around a lot of people. I heard the enemy in my head every day telling me he's going to kill me, telling me he hate me, things like that. And I didn't know no word back then. I didn't know how to fight. You know, I felt like I was going to lose my mind, you know. And he said, once you drive your car in the lake, once you slice your wrist, once you kill him and just, just have murder on me, you know, just plotting to kill and just crazy stuff, you know. It's just, yeah, I just thank God for intervention, you know. So what happened, I was in this jail cell and I picked up a book. Out of all the books I could have picked up, it's called Doing His Time. And I was like, what? So I picked up the book, because here I am in the cell. I couldn't leave the room except one hour a day. So I was in my cell, the suicide war for 23 hours out of the day, in my cell. And I was reading this book. It was all about God's grace, all about God's mercy. And I started to feel something I didn't feel for years. So remember I told you guys that when I was 21 I just was with God I was on fire with God I had a peace I felt that peace again that I didn't feel for years and then I start feeling hope again then I start crying out to God I said God I'm so sorry God how do I get here here I am about to go to medical school here I am you know just great things were happening for me but I made one stupid choice one bad mistake and I'm in jail with people that are actually suicidal people that you know just crazy like oh my god what am I doing here and it was a wake-up call that was the pivotal point of my life to say hey you need to get back on track with God so you know after I got up out of there I started living right I started getting into my word I started praying I started fasting I started you know just listening to God and then I noticed something see when you're prophetic you hear things you know, uh, the voice of the enemy, angels, because uh, they're ministering spirits. Amen. Uh, I could tell you about uh, all that. You know, I don't want to preach to you guys. You know, I start hearing God more. I start he hearing the enemy less. You know, I replace, you know, uh, I shut the door to sin in my life. I shut it off. 
and I start getting on my knees, start praying, start seeking God. I remind you, I was hearing from voice, both, both, both voices at the same time. All right. So make a long story short, I remember just praying one day. You know, I repented. And I start getting on the right track, and then I just I was praying about restoration of our marriage, my first marriage, and God was like, "You're a prophet." And I was like, "What?" And I just ignored him. I was like, I was like, what is a prophet? I had no idea. I had no clue in the world. So I just ignored it. I like I didn't hear it. But I said, God, I want you to not only bless this marriage or bless, you know, and bless my friend marriage and do this for that. And you know, just going off praying like that. And then I'm walking through the house. Na 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 na. And I hear, you're a prophet. I was like, you know, because it was, you know, Holy Spirit was talking to me. I was like, okay. I just ignored it and then I heard a whole bunch of numbers. 9, 27. And I'm like, what? So I was talking to a, a lot of saved people, you know, because my whole life was different, you guys. You know, here I am. I was going through a divorce. I was, you know, just spending a lot of time with God. When I say hours, hours, I just spent like maybe 16 plus hours, you know, pray sun up to sundown, you know, in prayer with the Holy Spirit for maybe like two years straight amen when i wasn't working i took god with me so you know god is with us even in our foolishness god was with you know he's with us so here i am i told this lady what does this mean i'm hearing these numbers i don't know what this is and then she gave me like a bible numerology chart and then i saw oh prophecy number 27 means prophecy i'm like okay wow oh so what happened was that's when it started, you guys. I was in church, and I hear the Lord say, "Tell my people this." I wouldn't say nothing, and then I felt pressure all on me, my chest, a weight like a weight of God's presence just sitting on me. And when I said, "God said this," God said that, and then people were like, "What? Oh my God! How'd you know that?" Oh, Amen. And then it's just a release, like ah, you know, burden was released. And that's how it started for me. God had his hand on me. He wasn't letting go. God made it where I could not run. I ran for so long. Like I said, I was just pursuing school. I didn't want to have anything to do with God. I was just lukewarm, backslidden for years. When I was backslidden, I was in a homosexual relationship for about six months. Just doing crazy stuff. Going to clubs again. Smoking. Drinking. You know, wearing clothes I had no business wearing, cursing like a sailor, you know, having an anger issue. And then guess what? God did a work in my life. You know, in that jail cell, that was my pivotal point in my life. So people out there, you you got family members, you know, in jail. Amen. And God can do a work in your family members. Amen. Jail will probably save your family because they're going to have an encounter with God. Because that's what happened to me. I had an encounter with God in that jail cell. So here I am. God started talking to me. Then, you guys, he started visiting me. I remember just sitting there, minding my own business, praying. Boom! The glory of God come in my room. Just me and God. Pin me down to the floor. And then he showed me weapons in the spirit. He showed me flaming arrows. That's in Psalm 7. You know, talked to me about water. You know how water can be a weapon. Uh, just different things. He showed me Jesus. You know, just in my visitations from Christ Jesus, I can never deny that he, you know, that, that he isn't real. God is real. Amen. You know, just supernatural things. Fire flash before my eyes, shooting across my room. Lights shooting across my room. Touch, like, feathers touching me. You know, I'm praying, but I feel somebody standing next to me, but I'm scared to open up my eyes to even look. Like, who's next to me? You know, and nobody home except me and, me and well, I'm with the Holy Spirit. Just things like that. I can go on and on and talk about these visitations. Amen. So three years, three years in the wilderness, God did a work in me. In a short amount of time, because, like I said, I was very backslidden, uh, pew warmer. You know, so he did a work of me. He had to accelerate me to get me caught up with some things I should have been doing years ago. All right. So in a three year process, written 13 books, you know, launched a Christian magazine, launched a publishing company, um, you know, helped other people write books. You know, had a radio broadcast, been on TV networks, 
you know and then God blessed me with restoration because I, I obeyed him and he blessed me to find my husband now amen his husband to, uh, my, my husband now to find his good thing amen and this man supports me this man makes me feel secure he doesn't try to hide things like my first husband tried to hide things you know just cheating with the women and all that and I, I just give God praise for that amen so now hear him a prophet of God uh, teaching other people about the prophetic, writing books about prophecy and, and um, pushing them towards the Lord and how to be a friend in God, traveling sometimes and preaching the word. That's nobody but God. So that's my story. You know, if you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one where I used to be a Buddhist and how I heard the name of Jesus, how I got converted to Christianity. To, and watch part two. Where I uh, was a stripper. Amen. You know, and my story about that and how I got saved from stripper to being saved. And watch part and watch and rewatch this part and share with somebody. Amen. But I want to offer up a chance for salvation because I know somebody out there is watching me. You know, just lift hands and just say, Christ Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Romans 10, 9 said, if I confess my mouth that you rose and died again, I shall be saved. You, you, you know, you, you, you rose and for my sins, I shall be saved. Amen. You are saved. Open to the body of Christ. Amen. So people, I love you. I pray this bless you. So thank you for watching and hearing my testimony. All right, deuces.